Hello, Craig. See, oh, sorry. We're a little, we're a little rusty. We're a little rusty. <laughs> I was just so excited to talk to you, man. Um, I know, but it's been, but yeah, but you've been in Europe and and we haven't talked on the phone or in person or anything. So uh, I, this is I know cool. lots of texting, but I haven't heard but, your voice in probably a month. As but as we said when we started this thing, we we texted, we talked all the time, so we gave our excuse, we given give ourselves an excuse to talk to each other for an hour, hour and a half yeah. every week. And we've made it up to now. This is episode 221 of podcast versus everyone. And I am Craig powers with me as usual as Jeff Newser and Jeff football oh. season is here. It's crazy. It is I, upon I, us. I, I, it has never snuck up on me. Like it has this year. There's already yeah. been many games played. Um, <laughs> You know, we, we saw uh, the the Colorado narrowly escape the uh, giant killers of North Dakota State last night. Um, and obviously we saw Florida State's <laughs> season, uh, you know, their yes. revenge season uh, immediately derailed by <laughs> uh, Georgia Tech in Ireland. Yep. Uh, so we're already in it, man. It's already happening. Um, but I know. the Cougs, the Cougs. Are, are kicking off and on an early noon game uh, tomorrow as we record. I'm sure most people uh, hopefully will get this in before the game. But, but yeah, um, Jeff, we're talking about football, talking about actual sporting events. I'm very excited. Yeah. I mean, as you can imagine, when I was in Europe with my family for three weeks leading up to uh, – Leading up to this weekend, I did not do a whole lot of following, you know, fall camp <laughs> while I was there. Uh, you know, I'm checking on our, you know, our members only slack and, you know, just kind of chime in and, and whatever. But, you know, very difficult from nine hours ahead to kind of kind of sort all that out when practices were and, and who was, and, you know, and making time to watch videos and read things. I honestly thought we would have maybe a little more downtime while we were there, but no, we, we yeah. ran ourselves crazy. And uh, well, it was funny. Like I had this great idea. Okay. So for people who don't know, like, so on, I don't know, August 5th, August 6th, whatever it was, uh, that's when we left Western Washington uh, it, to go to England and Italy and France. Uh, we've been planning this vacation for like two years. Uh, and we got back on Tuesday. So like, like we spent basically a week in each country, um, you know, doing this whole, you know, whirlwind tour and man, it's, it's so funny. Like, so for people who are longtime Kook Center readers, you know, you know, PJ Kendall, uh, PJ was, you know, stationed in Germany for a long time. And so that, uh, time difference between here and Germany was always kind of a funny thing when you know, he would post at odd hours and, you know, we were trying to talk with him. And so I got like this whole, you know, firsthand experience of that where I'm just like, nine yeah. hours. I don't even know what day it is back over here. I mean, I had like the world clock thing on my phone. So that I kind of knew what time it was for all my friends, but still it was, uh, it, it was challenging. So I, I did not spend as much as why y'all haven't gotten a podcast in three weeks. I know the <laughs> The premium subscribers were like, hey, man, record a podcast while you're in Europe. I'm like, yeah, let's see how that flies with my family. Um, <laughs> so I did I did not make time to uh, to record a podcast. The biggest thing was uh, I would have no way to actually like edit and post it and everything. Like I probably could have taken an hour to, to talk with talk with Craig. But 
Um, and then of course you were, you, you took your family to Disneyland as well. So like yep. we both have had kind of a crazy end of the summer. Yep. Yep. You know, it, it's, I, I'm in that cycle now of when your kid gets into school that like you try to jam everything into the summer and you and Sarah are yep. obviously even more so in that being, um, in, yep. in education. So, uh, yeah, so now we, we've learned that's the cycle and, uh, so we went when it's super hot in Anaheim and sweat of everything course. off. And, uh, I actually had to, had to, and I'm going to take this, uh, learning into the 95 degree day in Pullman tomorrow is that <laughs> I actually wore my compression shorts that I usually wear when I run. Uh, yes. the, the, the second day we were walking around Disney for, you know, 10 miles or whatever. Um, yes. because the, after that first day I was so sweaty, I had chafing. It felt like I had run a half marathon, um, cause of all the sweat. So the, I, I brought, it's probably about the distance you walked anyway. So yeah, I brought compression shorts to wear. Um, so I'll, I'll be, I'll be game ready, uh, tomorrow for that. That's good. Very warm football game i feel bad for the players it is going to be yes hot yeah i feel that deeply it was like 100 degrees in florence and rome when we were there <sighs> uh and so that was that 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 whew, that that was a whole thing man <laughs> like people warned me about um the french smelling bad and i was like okay cool no problem uh, but, the, but, but Florence and Rome, because, uh, it was a hundred degrees and people ride public trans. We rode public transit because there's five of us. I didn't want to drive. And, and so, especially in Rome, like you'd get on a, get on a big sweaty bus with like 50 other people, you know, shoulder to shoulder, uh, sweating to death while also trying to protect your stuff from being pickpocketed. And it was just, yeah. Yes, it was the the one nice thing in Italy is they they will sell you bottles of water for literally like uh, less than a euro, uh, like huge bottles of water, like because they know it's just it's super hot and also their yeah. tap water is gross and so. Um, but yeah, I feel you. I feel you. we we were doing laundry like every couple of days in our Airbnb because like it would, we've just you know sweat the through smell. everything. So, but yeah. you you will be game ready. You will be lugging around your backpack of old crimson fly. Yes, you know, just kind of like take it in, taking in the scenes, taking in the sights. We, we have, we are both right now, you know, doing it correctly. We have popped open old crimson legendary loggers for today's yes, show, sir. even though it's 11 in the morning, <laughs> not, not even quite 11. Um, it's not yeah. well five minutes to 11 it's yeah i was i was not gonna say it's 10 55 because that that would make me sound like a degenerate but uh well if the know. shoe fits yes um. the shoe does the shoe <laughs> indeed does fit for sure um so new season how you feeling you're you're i know you're fired up to go over to pullman oh yeah i mean i'm so excited i you know i i'm sitting in yakima i'm gonna drive to pullman later today um you know, we, we come over, uh, as you know, we come over to um, uh, um, my wife's uh, parents' house. Uh, usually every Labor Day, we do a, we float on the Yakima River. Um, we have in the yep. past uh, done the rapids on on Titan, but uh, uh, that's shut down because of the Rimrock fire. Um, but yeah, so we'll be floating the river on Sunday too. So I got to get up early on Sunday, come back. <laughs> That'll be rough. Uh, um, yeah, Easy. it's. Yeah, especially after all these old crimsons, I'm planning to drink to support the kids. In, um, in your Coog mug. It, yeah, absolutely in my Coog mug, yes sir. Um, but yeah, uh, yeah, I'm very excited. Like it's so it's so cool, especially now. Like uh, this uh, little community we've developed with the um, the podcast uh, Slack. Uh, I'm excited to see a lot of you guys uh, in Pullman. Um, I know I, I'm guessing the people that are the subscribers won't be afraid to say hi to me. And I know a lot of you already. So it's, it's very exciting to, to kind of like come into the season. The first time we've had that little community that we've built. Um, yeah. And, and yeah, cause I, I think otherwise, like it, it's going to be kind of a not super highly attended game. Uh, these ones never are. There's, you're always competing with Dave Matthews. You're competing with kids uh, wanting to go home for the three day weekend. Yep. Um, yep. so, uh, you know, people having other plans, like I know uh, I have uh, friends, uh, that have a huge uh, week. We talk about them all the time. The Logans, they have a massive family event every Labor Day weekend. 
Um, yep. That could, so they usually miss this game. So there's a lot of reasons people miss this game, but it, it is fun. Like there's let there's a it's kind of like a this this FCS uh, Labor Day weekend game is always kind of fun because it's like easier to navigate around Pullman. Um, yep. And yeah, and now I'm thinking about it, I don't even know who I'm gonna who, I'm gonna find some place to tailgate. Because <laughs> <laughs> who knows who's actually there? Yeah, like I, usually I go up with the Logans, or you know, I used to go with B A and Katie, and they they they're not there anymore. And so now I'm gonna just have to wander around. But I have I have uh, old crimson offerings as a uh, yeah. Uh, so, um, but well, yeah. if there's if there's one thing I know about you, it's that you will not have any problem making friends, and it's not just because you're gonna be handing out beer. Like that's obviously that helps people make friends, but like, you, like you are so funny. Like you can just parachute into any place by yourself, and you will have like five new friends within like an hour. <laughs> like, and I think like you know some of that's your personality, but you also used to travel a lot, you know, by yourself. So, um. You know, you're just real good at yeah. being friends. You're, you're, I, I can't wait to hear about all the new friends you make. And also, by the way, if you're listening and you would like to invite Craig to stop by, <laughs> you know, feel free, feel free to do that. You know where to find us. Yeah, I probably, I probably uh, would stop by. Um, but if I don't, it's because I'm at the Coog and drinking copious amounts yes. of beer out of my new Coog mug. In, but I'm very excited to get back. I'm very excited to reunite with because I've really only had it. I've only got to use it that one night at the initiation and I didn't make it back to yeah. Pullman since then, which I feel bad about, but, um, so I'm very excited yeah. to use my mug. So if y'all, if y'all see, if y'all see a very tall, large man giving an uncomfortable hug to a mug, uh, you will know who it is. <laughs> That'll be Craig. He'll be, he'll be the one, uh, hugging his mug, I, you know, I've in, been, in I've a been strangely affectionate way. I've been adding a few things to make myself even more identifiable. I have the long hair. I have a big ass mm-hmm. tattoo on my forearm. Yeah, like yep. if I if I were ever to rob a convenience store, they would be able to identify me <laughs> really quickly. Can you describe the suspect? Well, he's like real six tall, foot five, about six five, two hundred and seventy pounds, long yeah. hair, like long hair, beard, tattoos. huge tattoo that looks like kind of like a bird, like <laughs> you know. Yeah, they they would not. I don't think they would have any issues there. Yeah, sure. so I'll, I'll stay out of the life of crime. I'm I'm not cut out for it. That, that's but anyways, a good, that's a good. Fo- yes, I'm going to Pullman. I'm going to go watch football. 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 Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Football. Uh, something that we both sort of readily admit we do not have a lot of insightful thoughts about at the moment. <laughs> Cause like uh, a lot of turnover on the roster, right? You know, yeah. keeping up with fall fall camp was obviously a huge challenge for me, as I described. Although I did spend a good maybe half the flight back from uh, New Jersey. My that was the last leg of my flight, New Jersey to Seattle. Uh, reading as much as I could read about fall camp and trying to figure out the sorts of things that went on. Um, but yeah, it's, I, I think that like, cause we both like, as we started this, we were like, uh, I don't know anything. I don't know anything either. And I, I think people listen to us cause they think we know stuff or maybe they don't, I don't know. Maybe we're just that entertaining, but, um, so I think we do a pretty good job most of the time. Yes. I think we do a pretty good job most of the time of at least representing that we know stuff. And I think both of us are sort of aware, like, man, I, <laughs> There's, you know, we lost important players. We're replacing important players. Uh, there's all the uncertainty with the opponents, right? So, like, I mean, at the end of this, we're going to go through the exercise we do every year where it's like, okay, what, how many wins do we think the team ends up with? But, like, I mean, we're going to be pulling that out of our asses because we don't really know most of these mid uh, Mountain West conference teams. Like, like, it just feels like everything is very, um, you know, up in the air owing to the you know, not just the, the conference situation, but, but the roster situation, which I don't know, maybe that's part of what made it sneak up on me, I guess. Like, I don't know, just like it felt like talking about it. Like there weren't a lot of, um, for me, there weren't a lot of like sort of concrete things that I felt like I knew. And I try not to talk too much about things that I don't feel like I know very well. And so, which 
I don't know. That's that's kind of where I'm at. Like I don't know. Like how are you? How are you feeling about all that? Yeah, I'm definitely feeling the same way. Um, it's it's so hard to get a gauge. Usually we have this this rhythm of like the same opponents every year, plus you know a couple you know three different ones. But usually the there's a Mountain West team in there. There's a you know uh, but but now it's now we have eight Mountain West opponents. We have and, and we're playing U Dub at the start of the season. We're playing Texas Tech. Uh, so like our kind of our two most high profile and difficult games are non-conference games in September. And, and that's, that's weird. Cause um, I, you know, it, if, if this team is like they were last year, that works out because they, they, they played their best at the start of the year. Um, but, right. uh, and I guess the very, very end. Um, but, but uh, if it, it, but there's been a lot of seasons where they start slow and, and and then they knock off some teams in that back end, so it's kind of weird to gauge. Um, honestly, and then I, I don't know a ton about Texas Tech. U Dub is hard to gauge. They've lost so many players. Yeah, uh, and a new yep. coach, new staff, new everything. Um, so it's just there's there's just a lot of uncertainty. I mean, obviously with the transfer portal, it creates such an uncertainty. But you you add on uh, the the conference portal, um, and and this is this is just kind of the weirdest season to try to predict right. and figure out uh, and not even just on our, uh, for us, it's like a national stage. I think people have been yes. hard, hard, having a hard time figuring this out. Um, yeah, but yeah, I, I but yeah, we will try. We'll, we'll try. We'll do our best. Uh, <laughs> we will try. I mean, for me, like I see three kind of three main areas of, of sort of big time, um, like, where I'm not really sure like what we're facing. So quarterback obviously is the first one, right? So you're replacing, uh, you know, yep. Cam Ward to your starter uh, with John Mateer. So that, that's the big one. Uh, that's one big one to me. And to me, that's always, you know, quarterback's always going to be at the top. So that that's the big one. Um, the secondary, um, you know, was a huge question mark given everybody who left, you know, all the talent that was lost. And then now, you know, they're, they're sort of dealing with some injury, um, situation there. Uh, and then for me, the third one's the pass rush, right? That kind of goes hand in hand, I think with the coverage and, you know, when you lose, uh, you know, two guys who are in the end Brennan, you know, Jackson made the, the 53 man roster for the Rams, uh, Ron stone. I haven't seen, I know he got cut from the 53 man roster, but I'm assuming he ended up on, uh, on a practice squad. So, um, you know, when you take guys like that, out of your pass rush. And by the way, the pass rush actually wasn't even that great overall last year, only no. 24 sacks. That's two a game. That's, that's not enough. Um, and so like, to me, those three things, those, those three areas are, are kind of the, the biggest areas of concern. How, how are you feeling about Mateer, um, kind of heading into tomorrow? I now tomorrow he'll probably be fine. Um, but I, I hope because so. I think I think he's gonna be able to use his <laughs> leg. I think he'll be able to use his legs quite a bit. Yeah. Um. Yeah. But I am not. I am very cautious about this, like because uh, w- what we saw from him, yes, he's a great run. What we've seen in a very limited action in real game is he's a great runner, like yes. running back level runner. But he, I mean, he's built like a tank. He's and, built like a running back. He's, he's got an art, like he's got the physical tools. He has, does not make the best decisions. Um, you know, he, he throws some really curious balls. I, I think he's thrown some really bad pick, like a one in particular I could think of, but he's also had a couple throws where you're like, what are you doing, man? Um, yeah. So I, I think he, it, it we saw last year Cam was so risk averse at times and, and so good at protecting the ball for especially. And, and when he was, when he was successful in that they were, the Cougs overall were successful. And I think it's, it's going to derail the offense if, if he's making mistakes and I'm worried about his accuracy. Uh, We need, we need, you know, we need we need a sixty five plus percent completion percentage. Yes. I don't know if that's in him or not. Um, it is concerning that he didn't just win the job outright um, right yep. away. Because um, yep. uh, Eckhouse is, it, you know, he had he had some success 
in FCS, but he didn't have like the numbers like Cam had. Where it was like mind blowing. Right. And, and he didn't have like the physical tools that Cam had where he's like, obviously this is a division, like an FBS quarterback. Like it, um, it, it so it, you came in, you're like, okay, he's a, he could be a really good backup, but Mateer is the guy with experience in the system and experience, um, in, you know, at, at this level. Um, but he didn't beat him outright. Now, if you're super po- like optimistic, the last time we had that, uh, the, the guy who won out was Gardner Minshew and the backup was Anthony Gordon. So it turned out we just yes. had two incredible, had two really fucking great quarterbacks. <laughs> And and maybe that's yeah. the case. Like I I hope I, maybe. Hope, I hope that's the case. Um, if it is, hell yeah. Like, uh, but I, I I'm, it's it, it. That's not typically the case when there's a, a yeah, a, a, a especially an incumbent that can't. Like, a, 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 well, not necessarily an incumbent, but a a, a perceived incumbent that that right, is right. supposed to be taking saying. the job. Um, and so, yeah, there's a little bit of that. And, yeah, there, there's definitely, obviously, in the limited action we've seen from Mateer, there's concern. But there's also, you know, I, I think he he had his element of – his running style is very different from Cam. Um, oh, yeah. And I think they'll, they'll use him differently. Obviously, we saw they would use him in just straight QB runs a lot. And um, yes. I'd be curious how the approach, given that he's a starter – um, if they'll still do things like that. Uh, but I, I, I know that he'll take, he'll no doubt. He, he seems like he'll take off and run and uh, opportunity. He could be fun to watch. Um, but I, I think there'd be, there'll be some frustrating moments. Um, yeah. I mean, I and, think it's, I think yeah. it's going to be different, right? I yeah, think it's going to be very yeah. different from what we're used to. Um, and I think we did get a little bit of a glimpse of how Arbuckle slash Dickert. I, I don't know if this is like Arbuckle's idea or if this is Dickert saying, hey, I want to approach quarterback play this way. But there were a fair number of designed runs for Cam Ward early in the year last year. Like they, yeah. they definitely were not afraid to try and use his legs. Now he's not, as you mentioned, not the same kind of runner as Mateer, right? Like um little taller um, certainly not built, uh, as, as, as thick, thickly. I don't know if that's the right way to say it, but you, you know did, what I you mean? just, you just accidentally, um, you just accidentally named a Bill Murray song. Um, that's did I actually call it thick, thickly, uh, <laughs> ah, which, which is a that. play to play on one of the most famous song from his former band, um, which was called stick stickly. Um, oh, so, but well. it's thick, thickly that, that and obviously I just saw Bill Murray. So. Not not yeah, Bill Murray I'm the actor, Bill Murray the band no. B I L M U R I. Uh, but anyway, so yes. sorry you, you triggered <laughs> no, my brain. It's very funny. I love that. Thick thickly. Um, we're calling. Yes. No, we're calling thick, John thickly. Mateer, thick thickly now. That's thick what thickly. We're calling John yes. Mateer, is thick, yes. Thickly. Now now here's what I got to know about the Bill Murray song. Is thick thickly spelled like T H I C C T H I C C L Y? Yes. 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 Okay. Thick thickly. That's our guy. Um. But it's like, you know, definitely seems like they've really wanted to dabble in like using the quarterback's legs as an actual weapon to it. And one thing I noted, so something I did since we recorded last was I I did kind of a little breakdown on, uh, you know, some interesting recruits who have committed some of the interesting commits so far for 2025. The quarterback commit we've got is a guy who's primary now he can throw but his primary strength is his legs he's really fast like he's one of the fastest 100 meter guys in california he can run and so i'm sort of like looking at this trend on the guys we've recruited so like you know washington state obviously has a long history of recruiting big tall strong-arm you know statuesque guys yeah who can throw the ball right um you know dickert's recruits have tended more toward being able to use their legs. I mean, even Eckhaus, um, we saw in the spring game, like he can run a little. He he's yeah. not the same size as Mateer. He's not, you know, you're probably not using him in, you know, quarterback power or anything like that. But he can run. 
And so it seems like that maybe is a trend there. So one thing I'm like super curious about is how they're going to do that, whether, you know, how comfortable they feel running him, how, how many, I mean, I think they're going to feel comfortable, but like how many times a game, you know, how many carries, how many designed carries are we talking like three? Are we talking like five? Are we talking more like seven to 10, which doesn't sound like very many, but is actually a lot um, for a quarterback does it become a situation where they just want that threat, you know, and so they're going to use him in, you know, potentially like uh, run pass option type situations, right? The RPOs that you hear everybody talking about is that how they're going to try and use him. Um, I'm just, I'm very, very, very curious. I, Cause I think that like after watching him in the scrimmages, spring game, whatever, you just, you cannot replicate um, a guy who can actually run with some power because you're just not going to do that, right? Like he's got right. the no contact, even though he's built like a running back, he's still got the no contact shirt on. Um, so that's just like not a part of it. So it makes him very one dimensional for a guy whose strength is the fact that he's not one dimensional. And in fact, I think he reminds me a little, like, I don't know if you remember back when uh, like K state under bill Snyder, they always seem to have these quarterbacks <laughs> who were built like running backs or tight ends who could throw, well enough right like and they were completing you know they're not out there completing 65 67 percent of their passes they're out there completing maybe like 55 percent because they're mostly attempting they, downfield passes they're not really right good. downfield passes off of these you know run you know it, i don't think it was like rpo stuff back then but you know play action things like that i i don't know like i i think tomorrow is gonna be i i don't know that they're gonna open up the whole playbook tomorrow but yeah um, but I am I am extremely curious. I'm cautiously optimistic that the dimension of his legs will mitigate some of my concerns about him as a thrower. Um, and, and I do think that his body is such that he can that he can handle um, that kind of workload and not really get too beat up and too worn down. Yeah, so the quarterback obviously a question, but, the, you know, your other two that you raise are on defense. And this has been Dickert's yep. strength. As a head coach and yep. as a coordinator, we've had solid defenses since he's been around um, and yep. usually like better than we expected defenses. And so we, I've kind of come to expect that. But obviously they had a ton of turnover. They lost some very key guys in some all dudes. places, yeah. everywhere, everywhere. Pretty much um, all the dudes except for a linebacker. <laughs> yeah, like one so, dude. Yeah. Um, and so but they did. They did. Uh, I think they brought in some good. To, uh, transfers uh that you know the, I, there's potential for some re- guys some really solid players in the transfer portal that they acquired but i i it's it, like it one thing that is, is is so much on my mind is like what's like the just the level of competition like how is that going to uh how is that going to color how we view like the defense now yeah. they're, they're going to play two power four teams um, early, you know, in second and third weeks. Um, and maybe the defense doesn't look so great in those times, but yeah. then they're going to play like a bunch of mountain West teams. And honestly, a lot of the mountain West is weaker than it has even been late. Yes. Like recently. Yeah. Um, so the, there's that like you're gonna play a lot of like teams that would be the bottom of the pack 12 in, in previous seasons, but you're having like yep. six of those games. Um, and, and so it, it's just going to be weird. You know, obviously we look at, you know, some metrics like bill, bill sees metrics and, and uh, other metrics that try to, you know, normalize uh, things. Uh, but it's still going to be, it's going to be hard. Like when you're watching the games, like, are, are they good? Are they bad? I don't know, because it's not the same week in and week out competition that we're that we're used to. Um, right. But I think like schematically and and um, uh, like Dickert is is and his staff are are going to be there. Um, I trust that, um, and hopefully they can just get their guys to play, and and hopefully they can work out some kinks this week, and because it's you know it's it's into the fire next week and the week after. Yeah. I, I think I said a year ago, one of the things I trust the most is Jake Dickert's ability to put together at least a competent defense. Um, yeah. And I do still believe that. 
he it's the thing that concerns me a little bit is that like for example D- dicker just said something something that was brought up on on slack this morning as we were talking about um the game tomorrow by one of one of the readers was you know some of the things he's been saying about oh this is the most competition i've had and da 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 and you know it, like those are like i've been following yeah. sports long enough that that sort of like raises my ear to like Oh, this is like that. That's coach speak for we're we're really mediocre. Yeah, that, that, that's <laughs> like, coach speak. We don't, we have no standout players who are yeah. We have no studs. Yes, um, and so you know, like when you lose guys like you know Shaw Smith, Wade, and Jaden Hicks, and you know dudes like that, it's like, um, you know, it just kind of makes me think like uh, that's not good. Like I want I want people to separate. I want you know it's 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 very unlikely that at Washington State we're gonna have five six good corners right or five five or six good you know second like really good secondary players right like yeah we might have one or two you know we might have a shaw smith wade and a and a Jaden hicks right and you go okay great we got two studs and then da 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 like <laughs> you know if we're if we're if we're not you know look at seeing those studs rise up right now that doesn't that doesn't make me feel great right that doesn't make me feel great so no, jeff it just um, means we I, have no, you're wrong. We have six studs, you know? We this have is, six we, studs. We yeah, have the, 2000, the 2002 secondary is back there. It, yes. Don't know it yeah, they're, they're all back. <laughs> so, yeah, I do think that Dicker will be able to kind of pull some things together. I, I also think maybe there's a little bit of, you know, treating this Portland State game a little bit as a as a – you know, almost like a preseason game, right? Which is kind of why you schedule it that way. Is it, not that obviously it doesn't count. We've lost to Portland State, so it does count. But at the same time, um, you know, you try and schedule something where you know you should be able to win, and also maybe figure some things out or learn some things about your players that you, that you really can't learn unless they play a game. So, yep. Um, yeah, I don't know. It's uh, it it is it is a bit concerning. I'm I'm not sure kind of how that's how that's gonna go. Um, but you know. It, it, it is what it is, I guess, at this point. Yeah. Uh, it, again, this is uh, hard to gauge. Um, so much so much turnover, a completely different schedule, no conference. And that's a weird thing. If you're thinking about this, there, WCU is in no sort of conference race. How we frame yes. things, like it, it, it's so different. I don't even – I know we're in the – the Pac-12 bowl selections, the but how is that even going to work? I don't even know because it used to go by conference standings. Yeah, um, so what they're going to do, so just to like clarify that super fast, they're going to go by overall record. So essentially they're just going to order everybody by overall record. Well, and that's, then the same selection process will apply. So that's really given, good news for us. Yeah, that's given that our schedule is a lot easier than the, 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 yes. the, trader, the traders. Uh Yep. Um, well, uh, hopefully we can win those games and get a nice bowl game at the end of the year, get a nice matchup. At the end yeah. Of the year. So that is definitely an incentive. Like they could, you know, let's say they go out and win, I don't know, nine games or something, right? Like, you know, you're going to end up in a pretty nice spot. Um, yeah. Like how many, how, how many, how many former pack teams are, are going to be like winning nine games? Like I maybe Oregon, maybe Utah, yeah, maybe Oregon. Maybe Utah, yeah. Maybe maybe Arizona. But that's, I don't know. Yeah, um, I'm not. I'm not willing to go that far. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, I think I think you're looking at maybe a couple. I don't. I USC maybe. I guess I don't know. I don't, I don't know. know. So it's, you know, you win you win nine games, eight games. You're going to be in a really nice uh, situation for a bowl game. So that that is a nice little carrot for the players there because yeah, I mean, there's no there's no conference championship to play for, and in fact, they can't even. Um, they're not even eligible really for that G five, um, playoff spot either. They, nope. so like, even if they went out and won 11 games, you know, I, well, okay. Maybe if they won 11, games, if they, they won 11 games, I think tri- they'd be ranked high enough. I, I, Probably. Well, well it's okay. If they get uh, Texas tech, if they get Texas tech and UW at the start of the year as part of that. 11. Yeah. Yeah. Like, okay. So if you win 11 games there, but you, but you're essentially, you're being treated the same as Notre Dame basically. So that's, mm, yeah. I don't know. That's, that's, that's really with, tough, right? That's really, the, and I'm sure the players are thinking, yeah. Without the, uh, the mystique of Notre Dame. <laughs> exactly. 
exactly. So, uh, you know, it's not much out there other than, hey, let's play for the highest bowl game we can. And also, you know, the uncomfortable truth is, you know, play for whatever that next contract is maybe that's yep maybe that's transferring you know i mean one thing uh, i saw this on the kook center slack this morning um you know story about way sean parker the running back who looks like an absolute stud and you know the the there's sort of a tacit agreement that he will play and play a lot and you know there's i think a pretty good chance that he's not around for more than uh, a year or two. So I, I just yeah. think that's the new reality of, of where we're at as well. But that can also work to your advantage when guys are out like, Hey, I have to play well. And so hopefully that helps as well. Yeah. Um, and obviously we could, we could show like, Hey, look, Cam Ward got big payday. He came here and yep, he played two years and played well. And uh, yeah. I mean, uh, it's not a but, bad place to be. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's kind that's of a whole like other even, podcast, but even, I don't if, think that's necessarily. Let, let's, bad. let's be honest. Even if the conferences didn't change, like that was still where we were going to be. So, um, yeah, that's yeah, but uh, yeah, but yeah. So I, I think what what positive thing going into the season, unlike Oregon State, we have some continuity in the coaching staff. Um, it, so that's one less, you know, unknown yes. that we have. Oregon State is just. Uh, they lost their they're, entire they're team. They're in a bad way, man. They, they, they do have – it is some continuity. They have a, a coach that was on the other staff, but there's only two coaches from their staff. So it's basically almost a completely new staff. Um, they have a, 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 less, a less cool NIL beer. No offense, guys, but tailgate, light lager. Come on. You couldn't come yeah. up with a better name on, than man. that? You got to do better than that. Tailgate, light lager. Yeah. It could be like anywhere. Yeah. Like call it like great damn beer or something yeah. like that. Like, yeah, that's what I was like. That's why I, I said damn good beer, something like that. Damn good beer, something like that. I mean, come on. Come on, fellas. Come on. And they didn't get block 15 to brew it either, man. What are we doing? That is weird because we I think here? that block 15 has, uh, and I think they're Oregon State alums. I think they have bigger, uh, bigger uh, distribution, distribution than Cascade Lakes than does. Cascade I don't know because I don't. I, I guess Cascade Lakes is pretty, but it's definitely not. Cascade Lakes is not at the level of Pike and Fremont in terms of distribution. So hopefully they can make enough for the beeves. Cause I, I know like already Pike and Fremont are figuring out that they cannot make enough for us. Like it's not, it's not possible. I actually went when I was, when I was at, uh, I, I stopped by Pike and bought a case before the Bill Murray concert on Tuesday. They didn't even have it on tap. Like they were out on tap. Like, <laughs> you couldn't even get the beer yeah. on tap. Like, so like, uh, but I'm guessing also, I, I'm hoping they sent extra kegs of the Coug for all these football weekends coming up. God, I hope so. Cause I, I will be devastated if I go to the Coug and I'm like, old crimson, like we're out. But I'm like, no, yeah, no, there are so many. It's okay. like, there, there's like a, there's a Facebook group for Coug mug club members. And it's basically just to, you can so you can tell them, oh, can you pull my mug for this weekend or whatever? Yeah. Um, and and ever it's like everyone's like, can you pull my mug? I'm excited to have old crimson in it. <laughs> like like everyone comments that like, I'll pull my mug. I can't wait to have an old crimson in my mug. Like and, and it's not, awesome. it's, it's just gonna be like so many pictures of old crimson. Like they like all the yep. alums are gonna come back and because I can see the students being like, uh. I'm not buying that $19 pitcher or whatever, you know, like, yes. but, but, the, but the alums were like, I don't fucking care. Let's go like 19 bucks. Like that's cheaper than in, in Seattle. So let's go for sure. Um, but yeah. Uh, so yeah, it's, uh, well, and, the, anyways, and the, uh, the college kids are usually also going for most bang for the buck, right? Like they want, they're going to be like, please give me the pictures of Bodie or Bodie, Bo-, you know, right. Like, but, well, yeah, but if the it's olds the same like us, Yes, but the olds like us, we're like, no, no, no. This is the I'm like, like I'm like, I'm five like, percent beer, a, drink all night. This, this is a mar- yeah, exactly. This is a marathon, not sprint, especially a noon yes. game. That means I'm going to be drinking yes. like at nine o'clock in the yes. morning. Like nothing but those light loggers all day will be beautiful. Yeah. Yes, I mean, it the will. Blo- the bloating though, especially drink it straight from the can. So, pro tip: have a cup to pour the beer in and pour it hard. Yes. Let's yes. all the gas, the, the carbonation. Get, get out. some of that. Uh, get get less, some of that carbonation less, out. Less bloaty belly, but you drink it from the yeah. can. 
getting all that. If, or if you do that little, yeah. that little really slow pour that we learned in college where you have like no head whatsoever. Um, yes. No, that you want leave, some head. That, you, you leave all of the, you leave, you're leaving all that gas in there and that's all going to your tummy. So just pro tips guys. Uh, yeah. But I don't, I don't have a, a cup to carry around. So I'm just going to be pounding them. Um, <laughs> out of the thing. Yeah. But yeah, well, you know, anyway, so Jeff, let's, let's get to, let's get to the, the, our little, like our traditional season preview here. Yes. And I, we, we didn't preview Portland state, but come on guys. Come on. Which by the way, time out, we're not doing a beer segment because we're both drinking old crimson lager right now. And, we and we've already, reviewed it, so we've already reviewed it. It's the greatest beer of all time. We know. Okay. Yes. Um, easily. Yeah. For the kids, uh, for the kids. So, uh, Jeff, so we're going to go through, we do this every season. I think we might've forgot last season. I don't know. Uh, we're go through, give your percentages. Jeff, are, are you going to take notes or am I going to take notes? What yeah, I'll take, I'll take notes here. I'll okay. take notes. So, so the way we do it, right? Like we assign a percentage that they're going to win. So it's like a win probability exercise. Right. And then we, at the end, we total up the, you just add up the percentages and then uh, that tells you how many wins you think you expect this, out of the team. This is called, this, this is, is called how Ken cum- Palm does it. It's called cumulative probability folks. There we go. There we go. From the man who went to grad school for statistics. For one year. <laughs> for one year. <laughs> that's a, hey, that's one more year of formal statistics training than I have. So. <laughs> All right. Let's get to it. Let's start um, with Portland State. Uh, Jeff, what uh, from zero to 100 probability, what, what do you give us to beat Portland State? Yeah, I'm going to go like 90%. So I'm going to give that the little the little point nine zero. Um, I think that, you know, the roster, even though we had some turnover, we didn't have a ton of defections other than the sort of top end guys who would have been leaving anyway. Right. Yeah. Um, th- you know, so that makes me feel, I think, pretty OK. Um, talent level should still be well above um, well above Portland State. Um, you know, you mentioned Colorado and North, North Dakota State playing last night Not um that, yeah. you know yeah and it, it so north north Dakota state hung out hung around for a while but you know at, at some point colorado's talent took over i know that they're maybe their top end talent at this point maybe is a little higher than ours but at the same time i think it just kind of shows like the the fcs dynamic so i'm, I'm gonna go 90 percent 0.9 uh probability there yeah um i you know i was you know i i have these flashbacks to an 11 a.m game in the rain and in 2015 yeah. um yep but i i'm not too worried about that this time around um so yeah i'm i'm gonna go with the i'm gonna go with the 0. 0.95 big old 0. 0.95 okay. for this okay not cool enough to do a one not not brave enough <laughs> nothing's truly one well uh, okay i'll rephrase that there's only one game that's truly a, a 1.0 or a 0.0, but we'll get to there. <laughs> hey, but we've we've won that game recently now, so you got to... Uh, sort of recently. All right. Well, our current coach okay. has done it. All right. That's true. Um, all right. Next up, Texas Tech. Uh, I'll, I'll yeah. start this time, Jeff. Uh, yeah. So I, I don't know. Like, Texas Tech... I. I think they're, I, I think they're kind of middle of the pack in the Big Twelve. Yes, towards towards the bottom. Um, but this is this is going to be a hyped crowd. This is going to be it is. our one big, like hyped crowd. Like the the yes tickets are mostly sold. It's going to be like the Wisconsin game last year. Yeah, it's going to be yep. like that. it's going to be a Wisconsin game last year, similar to that kind of buzz. Uh, this we were kind of lucky to get this game because uh, of Oregon had to, um, to give it up. Uh, so yeah, very excited for this one. Um, I'm gonna give us a 50 50 shot to win it, 50 percent to be Texas okay. Tech. Cool. So I'm gonna go into this feeling like that you know Texas Tech has a bit of a talent advantage. 
Um, but yeah. as you said, I think that's going to be mitigated to some degree by um, the location. And then also it just being like, you know, the crowd just being super hype, right? Like that's going to be um, a legitimate thing. And, and we've all it's been to games. 7 in PM Pullman. Hype, hype crowd. Yes. Yes. We, it's a night game. We are going to be, the crowd is going to be well prepared by 7 PM. Lots of old crimson. Um, lots of old crimson. And I think that like, you know, when, you know, we all know Martin stadium is not very big, but when it is a big game and it's full and people are excited, um, it's a legit home field advantage. I mean, I think back to like, you know, the, the Friday night USC game, right. That, that, um, with, you know, the Jihad woods fumble at the end to win it, you know, I think to game day with Oregon, um, you know, I think to Wisconsin last year, I mean, there's just all these examples of these games where the crowd is just like super, super, super excited. Right. And Texas tech being one of the very few power conference teams to come to Pullman, you know, in the last uh, however many decades, I, I think you put all that together and everybody is going to be super hyped. And then also the the players are going to be super hyped. Right? I mean, this is their chance to be like, you know, fuck you all. You know, we belong in a major conference. And yeah. I think that I, I think there was some of that at play against Wisconsin last year as well. It, it's hard to sustain that through an entire season, as we saw last year. But for a game, I think they can rise. So I'm going to go ahead and give it. I, I'm not going to go quite as high as you. I'm going to go 45%. Um, but that's a hell of a lot higher than I would give it if it were on the road where I might give it like 20 or 25%. So I feel pretty good about the fact that that game is in Pullman. All right. That brings us to the Apple, the Apple Cup in fucking Lumen Field. Lumen Field, which I will the definitely not neut- be attending. Neutral site. I, I checked StubHub. Last night, just curious. And yeah. Like, this, even the stuff up tickets are still up at like, you know, 75 before fees for like the 300 yeah. level. Yeah, just give it some time. Like People it's, will it's be nice unloading too. that shit. I, I'm still down for like a, a tailgate around it and not going in and just yeah. hanging out at, at uh, oh, yeah. hanging out at, uh, at plastic. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. We're going to. So be, by the way, side note, be on the lookout for that. We are still, I think, planning on doing some sort of get together at Flatstick Pioneer Square to watch the game for those of you who, like us, are principled enough to not attend. So, um, okay, so I guess I should go first this time. I, I guess, like, we're taking turns going first, right? Is that, is that kind of what we're doing? Yeah. Okay, sounds good. Um, under normal circumstances, I would give this 0%, as I alluded to earlier, because it just seems to be that way. These are not normal circumstances. Um, UW is still going to have a talent advantage, but the environment is going to be incredibly weird. Like, be- as, as you talked about, right, the ticket sales are, you know, what they are, which it's is... Gonna be, know, it, like, it, it, it's it's going to be the least... Elect, like it's it's a weird thing. at least electric environment for an yes. apple cup in a long fucking time yes like it, which is hilarious gonna, because yeah. the way they tried to set this up was to make it electric oh 50 50 tickets and and it is going to be weirdly antiseptic i think yeah so yeah um i'm gonna go ahead and say all right so UW still gonna have a bit of a talent advantage um i don't think they have a coaching advantage but that's for another day Um, so I'm going to go ahead, but it is still in Seattle. It is still going to be tilted toward UW fans. Um, I've, you know, I work with a lot of casual UW fans. They are still pretty like, yeah, I think I'll go, you know, like that kind of stuff. So I do think it's going to be, the crowd is going to be tilted towards, uh, UW fans, even though it's maybe going to be a little strange. So I'm going to go ahead and go 40% on that one, uh, which again is a little higher than I normally would, but I don't think that the talent difference is that big. It's still early in the season. Um, I think the environment is going to be strange. I, I just, I just think that that game is set up for some prime weirdness. I I think I I know this is not usually what the type of thing that we positive about, but I I feel like uh, versus, you know, we saw that it was very clear when with Leach, like that there wasn't like emphasis put on this game and there wasn't 
any sort of special and but for you dub it always was a big deal and yep. and but we've seen under dicker like you know they they beat their ass in 2021 they honestly like against uh, a very good u dub team it was tied or, or wc had the lead like late in the game yes. and then u-dub scored a couple yep. quick touchdowns um the next year and then last year obviously like u-dub or wc had no business being in that game and should have won uh um and so i th- there's something about like i i feel like there's there's an element of dicker can get these guys up for this game i still think you know it, yeah talent advantage all that i'm not gonna go as high as 40 i'm gonna go 35 percent but uh, yeah, okay. like that. That means I wouldn't be surprised if they won. But I, yeah, I do I mean, think that's you, a you, that's a you, one in three. Yeah, I, I see. Yeah, that, that's higher than I would give it if it was in Husky Stadium. Yes, um, I agree so, with that. Yeah. yeah. Although the game should be yeah. in Pullman, it's should be Pullman's turn to host the game. Well, um, no. So Jeff, now we'll move on to San Jose State. For mm-hmm. the Friday family weekend game, yeah, I, which I I think is kind of a secret genius because no one was going to go to this game on Friday, and now you're going to have a pretty full crowd because it's family weekend. Yep. Yep. Um, yep. Yeah. So, uh, San Jose State. I know they're improved from years past. They, they've they've been on a, like an upward trajectory. Uh, but I, I think I think we'll still come in have have an advantage here. It's on my sister's birthday. You can't you can't. I, I'm gonna be at a Casey Musgraves concert while this game is happening. <laughs> uh, so yeah, I'll be, uh, using using uh, the stream to watch maybe. Yeah, um, you'll be like kind of sneaking peeks down at it. Yeah, yeah. In between songs. Yep. Yeah. Um, which we have like pit tickets, so I'll be like standing looking at my phone. Uh, but anyways, <laughs> so uh, San Jose State again. This is going to be a whole list of games that I have no fucking clue about because I don't really know yeah. these teams that well. Um, but yeah, I'm gonna go San Jose State. I'm gonna go 65 percent on a Friday. Okay. On a CW. All right. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I think under normal circumstances, we might feel like San Jose State a little maybe a little bigger advantage than that. But I I think you're kind of on, like, I think we're thinking kind of along the same lines on this one. I mean, Friday, Friday night's weird. They're going to be coming off two super emotional or two, like, I don't know if they're emotional games, but like games that they are heavily emotionally invested in Um, playing Texas tech and UW San Jose state going to be uh not a team that you know commands their attention necessarily um san jose state opened up they played last night um their quarterback is one emmett brown wsu (laughs) transfer so how about that um he actually played pretty well against sacramento state the uh I don't know. Is Paul Wolf still at Sacramento State? I don't know. Anyway, the Sacramento Staters, uh, he was, you know, played pretty well, threw for almost 300 yards, three touchdowns. So um, so that's pretty cool for him. I do think, uh, you know, family weekend, night game, Friday night game, um, I think it's still going to be pretty sparsely attended um, in general. Um, and it oh, will be the Paul, last home hey, game for a little while. Yeah. Go ahead. Paul Wolf is Paul Wolf is the head coach at Cal Poly. Oh, Cal Poly. That's right. Yeah. All right. That was like probably two jobs ago for him. Yeah. Um. I, yeah. So I. Th- I don't know, man. This game has me feeling a little. Uh, a little less confident than maybe it otherwise would. I'm gonna go a little lower than you. I'm gonna go sixty percent on yeah. that one. I still think, obviously, um, there's uh there's a little bit of uh, talent there. But you know, if we look at, I'm looking at um ESPN's FPI right, which is their you know power index, whatever cheater, you know, San, San Jose, I know, but I'm just kind of like, just kind of get a gauge on what, um, you know, the thought is on the actual relative talents here. And, you know, San Jose state is, uh, they're probably like 15, 20 ish spots below us, which is, you know, a bit, but not like ridiculous. So, um, I don't know. That'll be an interesting one. All right. Next one at Boise state. 
Um, I'm gonna be honest. I know nothing about the Boise State Broncos uh, at this point. Um, I do know that they are ahead of us in this FPI ranking, not by a ton, um, but they are ahead. Um, and and <laughs> it's funny. Like I I think to be honest, on most of these Mountain West, number one, something we talked about earlier was that like, you know, when you play the same teams year after year in the Pac-12, like you kind of have some sense of who they are, who their important players are who's coming, who's going. Um, even if you don't know them on a real granular level, you have a kind of a sense of how you match up with them stylistically, whatever Th- these mountain West games. That's kind of the hardest thing <laughs> to figure out is like, we just don't know these teams uh, very well at all. I do know that I think playing at Boise state um, is going to be a challenge. I think mm-hmm. that we will be underdogs in that game. Um, but I also think that like for most of these games, man, I'm going to land between 40 and 60% on them. You know, uh, so I'm going to go ahead and go another uh, 0.40 on this one. 40% chance of beating the Broncos on the Smurf turf. Yeah, I'm going to go a little lower. I'm going to go 30%.3. I just, yeah, I think it's going to be a tough. uh, It'll be their uh, first road game, right? And yeah, first true road game. Um, And yeah, I think. I think boys will stay to be amp boys stay will be amped for it. Um, being like, yep. Oh, you're at our level now. <laughs> um, there might be some so, of that, Yeah. Yeah. So uh, yeah, I'll go 30% point three chance for the Cougs to win that one. I think we're almost about even now. Then. <laughs> I think so. Yeah, I think so. So next, next we have a back to back road games. Fuck that. Um, yep. So the but it's, there is a buy in between, so not so bad. Uh, heading down to Fresno, who beat our ass in a bowl game a couple of years ago. Um, yes, they did. But has has had a bit of a talent drain since then. Um, they are. I'm going to do the Jeff thing. They're a little below us in the FPI. Uh, right around a little bit higher than. Um, some of their other uh, Mountain West uh, friends, uh, a little bit higher than San Jose State. Um, so I think this will be, but not quite, not the level of Boise State. I, I yeah, it. They're kind of in a weird place too. I, I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go forty percent for this one. Yeah, and they're a tough one to kind of. I think get a little bit of a gauge on because, you know, coaching change Tedford was so much of what they, Mm -hmm. you know, kind of their resurgence, right? Like, um, cause he's such a damn good coach. Uh, so him being him stepping down, I'm not, I'm not sure how that impacts their overall outlook. Um, on this one, I'm going to go, I'm actually going to call this like a 50 50. Um, because I think that, I think we're more talented than they are. Um, I think the bye week being in between um, helps us a little bit, even though it is a road game. Um, I just, I think that, I, yeah. I mean, I think we're a better team than Fresno. I think that the bye week helps. Um, being on the road obviously is is rough, but uh, if we were talking two consecutive weeks being on the road, I might feel a little different, but I think the bye week helps. Yeah. Uh, after that, Hawaii. Hawaii, uh, by all accounts should be pretty terrible. (laughs) Um, like maybe like Portland state kind of terrible. So, um, now we are later in the season, so who knows, but, um, I'm going to go ahead and go 80% on that one. Um, you know, I, I, I considered even going a little bit higher than that, but I don't know, man, I I have a hard time going higher than that right now with this team against, against really uh, any FBS opponent, but Hawaii is by all accounts, pretty horrible. So yeah. Yeah. They're, they're real. And they got to get to Pullman. Yeah. Which is like, that's a whole thing. If you're coming from Hawaii, they're going to have to fly to Seattle and then fly to Pullman. Uh, yeah. And and as someone who has recently flown 14,000 miles, like, yeah, that too. Well, I don't think are there direct flights to Spokane from Hawaii or are you just talking like Seattle to Spokane on down? There might be, I don't know, Southwest. Yeah, I don't know, maybe. But regardless, man, flying it—that's that's tough, man. They're gonna have to go to Pullman, and yeah. So, and then the, I think the other part of this also is after um, 
not having a home game since San Jose State, and that's even a Friday game. I think there's going to be a number of people who don't go to that San Jose State game because it's a Friday. Two road games with a bye week in between. This is uh, this is the only game yeah. in October, right? In Pullman, so yeah, um, should be should be a pretty decent crowd, I would think. Um, yeah, it's homecoming, so, so I yes, so I think um, all that adds up to a pretty decent, pretty decent crowd. I it's it's uh, incredibly fucking annoying that this has been a regular thing for uh, several years. Is that we only have one home October game? Like, yes, it's so annoying. Which I hate sucks. it. Because October Cause like, is a great time to go to. It's Pullman. the best time in Pullman. Sometimes it yes. rains, but like when when it's not, when it's that crisp fall, it's so good. Yes. That's the ideal. It's beautiful. And I'm gonna miss that one because I'm gonna be at when we were young, emo festival oh. in uh, Las Vegas. Um, Las Vegas. So I'm only going in November and September games. Uh, I am going to. So Hawaii agreed they are awful. I'm gonna. Jump back on a more positive trend. I'm going ninety percent be Hawaii. They, yep. I think, our FCS level bad. Um, and then next week, the next week after that, at San Diego State, BA's birthday. We're going down, flying to San Diego State. Um, That's awesome. Going to be a good time, regardless of what happens. San Diego, San Diego State, not very good. No. Um, so. But not terrible, probably. No. Yeah, but not very good. Uh, but we're also could also not be not very good. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna give us a 55 percent chance to win this game. Like I feel good about it. Oh wow, I feel pretty good. Yeah, I, I think it's really because I would because I I'm there. They're gonna they're gonna feel my presence. Oh, yes. Well, that makes a they, difference. They're, they're gonna know like it's you know it's BA's birthday. They wanna. They want. They want to. They want to make sure he has a good weekend. They're. They're. They're gonna know. Like, my my wife's gonna want it to be a, a fun trip, and and I'll just be grouchy if we lose. Um. So she's not gonna want that to. You know. The, the, the they'll have that pressure, and then they'll deliver. Fifty five percent. Okay. All right. I like that. Um. I'm gonna go a bit lower than that. I'm gonna go kind of on the flip side. Point four five. I'm gonna go forty five percent. Um. Again, just because I don't think that the I don't think that the ability level talent difference is that huge between the two teams um, playing on the road. And again, I, you know, you alluded to this earlier, but you know, I, I think you alluded to it on the Boise state game, but you know, I mean, I think that the teams we're going to play are still going to look at us as someone they have something to prove against. And, yeah. and I don't know that's going to be a huge issue for our home games, but I do think maybe for our road games, um, I think that's going to be a bit of a thing. So, San Diego State, I'm going to go 45% on that one. Um, a little less than a coin flip, but still, um, I think it's going to be a fun, exciting game. And then Utah State, uh, the following weekend, that's another team. You know, we talked about how Fresno State has lost their head coach um, and how that is, you know, potential turmoil. Utah State also lost their coach, but that happened in a, in a bit of a, a weirder fashion, uh, with their, their guy getting, getting essentially put on administrative leave because of some, uh, potential, uh, you know, viol- domestic violence type situ- reporting situation, um, you know, problematic stuff there. So, um, I think Utah State at home, I think Utah State's not very good. I think they've got a little bit of chaos in their program. Um, and so I'm going to go ahead and go pretty high on this one. I'm going to go 65%, um, on this one to win a two out of three type situation. Um, I like, I like our chances in that game. How about you? I hate road games in the mountains. Um, this is an elevation game. Uh, but this one's at home. Isn't that home? Oh, oh, that's right. That's right. It is at home. I'm going to be, what the fuck am I talking about? I'm going to. The yeah, state. I don't know, but I was I'm fucking like, yeah. taking B, taking B. My bad. Oh, there oh yeah. Go. I was wondering why you were so high. I was like, I don't. I got my brain stuck on the. We have we, uh, in the next game. Um, uh, so Utah State, yeah, um, yeah, they're not very good. I think we're a lot better than them. I, I, uh, I hope it's uh, that this weekend is built like with the game times that we can go. There's a soccer game that same day is it so i, I hope yeah. that like 
there's bat there's both basketball teams i hope that draws some people in like you can go to a lot of kook sporting events this weekend so you should go it'll be really fun yes um i'm taking my taking my six-year-old she'll be almost seven um to go to all that she's excited for that um yeah utah state i I think yeah i think it's it's gonna be i i I expect us to win i'm yeah i'm gonna go like 80 percent on this one i definitely feeling good okay all right that's pretty good now here's a couple of road games yeah so this is the elevation (laughs) there we go uh new mexico um New Mexico historically awful. Uh, I guess. It, hmm. Where are they at now? They're a little bit better right now, aren't they? I don't think so. Okay, never mind that. Maybe I'm thinking something else. Uh, or maybe yeah. I was thinking. No, they're uh, pretty horrible still. I think. I was thinking. Uh, They've UNLV. already got one loss. I was thinking UNLV. I get them confused because their colors a lot. Yeah. You know, these, yeah. Um, so yeah, they're yeah they bad. lost to Montana State, by the way. They lost to Montana State at home. Oh yeah, Montana, Montana State, State was, was like a, favorite. and they were like a two touchdown road favorite yeah. or something in that game. Well, I'm glad we're not playing Montana State. Um, <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, they're real bad. Uh, they're they're the ESPN has them right at like the same level as Hawaii. Uh, yeah. But it's on the road. It's at elevation, as I said before. I hate that. Um, I, it, yeah, it's just a weird travel to Albuquerque. Anyone who remembers trying to figure out how to go to the New Mexico Bowl, no one wants to talk about that game, but that was yes, not not an easy place to get to. Um, I yeah, I, I, I'm I'm going to go. Like I still think we win. Um, I'm going to go two out of three on like almost sixty five percent on this one. Yeah. I feel even better about this one um, because I think New Mexico State is real, real, real horror bad. And so I, I, yeah, so I'm going to go three out of four. I'm going to go 75% on this one with New Mexico. I I just think they're, they're terrible. Um, The only thing that concerns me a little bit about that game is that on the horizon is Oregon State. And that's kind of, I think, a game that the players are going to be looking forward to. Um, so the, at Oregon Pac, State, it's a conference championship game. Yeah, the Pac-2 conference championship game. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and call that one a 50-50 coin flip. Um, again, because I it's, boy, Oregon State lost so much. They lost so so much. Um, and then you know, coaching continuity and things like that. You know, is Trent Bray really up for you know? I don't know, man. It just Oregon State has so many question marks for me. Um, that I'm not super sold. So I think that that, I think, I think we're better than they are. And so I think playing on the road, I'm going to go coin flip 50, 50. Yeah. I'm not, I'm not sure if we're better than they are. I'm not sure. I got, like, I, it might not be. I, I don't know. Like it, and I think, yeah, Oregon State's going to be amped for this one. I think the crowd's going to be super that amped. True. Kind, of, kind of the same like effect that we got hosting them last year. Um, this is just this is a game of emotion now. It's obviously camaraderie, but um, that makes you want to win even more. You want to beat your brother at everything, yes, right? Like so, um, so yeah. I I'm gonna I'm gonna give us forty percent, forty percent chance to win. The last time we were in Corvallis, they were hell bent on beating us and beat the living hell out of us. So I, I don't yes. know. We'll see. Um, I different hate coach, it. different players, yeah, different, different coach, situation. different situation for sure. But that coach was on the staff. Uh, um, that is but true. The, uh, so what we have left is November 30th in Pullman. <laughs> After Thanksgiving in That's, Pullman. It's not even the Thanksgiving week. Is it Thanksgiving a little earlier? No. Nope. Nope. Yeah, Thanksgiving's oh, the weekend before. Oregon, the Oregon State game is the rivalry game on Thanksgiving weekend. Yeah. So this is like, yeah. I, I guess the students will be you come back, back and then. play in Wyoming, play Wyoming at home. We're playing. No, de- like that's how you brand. I saw someone, Brett. I can't remember who said that. I'm sorry. I'm outside. It's UW. We're playing UW last game of the season. Yes. 
Just, yeah. just, 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 that's what we're doing, folks. That's what we always do. We play you dumb. This is how we do it. Right? Last game of the season. The, well, Jeff, okay. I'm going to go. Okay. Uh, who goes first this time? I forget. I think you go. You. I want, no, it's I want, you. I, okay. I want you to give. Yep, you go for it. I want, I want, I want you to give um, a snow probability and a wind probability here. Okay. <laughs> Okay. I don't even know how how bad is Wyoming. I, I I don't even know, man. I, I uh, pretty terrible, I think. Yeah. Um. So I'm gonna I'm gonna go eighty percent chance to win, and I'm gonna go forty percent chance that there's snow on the ground. Of snow. Yeah. Yeah. I like that. Yeah. Uh. I think Wyoming's pretty bad. Um. I also, again, I wonder about you know coming back home and it being, you know. I don't know. Last game of the year. What are they going to be playing for? Maybe they're playing for a really nice bowl game. Maybe they're not. I don't know. I'm going to go ahead and go a little bit lower than you. I'm going to go 70% on this one. Um, but and, and I might even be inclined. I don't know. I think that's even a little optimistic um, just in the sense that, man, it is how many people are going to be there? Like oh. it, th- we're talking e- like even if you want to go, it might be prohibitive just to get there. Right. Yeah. Like, you know, you mentioned, OK, 40 percent chance of snow. Uh, yeah. Like that doesn't just impact the game. You know, that impacts uh, people Traveling trying to get playing. there. Right. Like even just down from Spokane or if I decide, you know what, I would love to take my family to this game. Oh, because the I hotels get over the will mountains. be the hotels will be like pretty normally priced like for this. game. Yeah, I think I think like, I got to get over the mountains with five people like. I don't know, man. I, 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 I don't know. So there's a part of me that thinks like 70% is, is reasonable because you know, Wyoming's not very good. It's at home, whatever. But there's also a part of me that's like, man, there, I don't know, man, this game seems to me to be, have some prime weirdness, uh, built into it. And then I, I'm not sure is the, has the kickoff been determined for that game? Yeah. It's, I, don't know. I seem three, to have some kind three, of recollection. It's a, it's a three thirty game. 3.30 game. Okay, so that's not too bad. For some reason, like I had a recollection that maybe it was a night game, which would be even weirder. Um, but it is going to be cold, right? I mean, the sun's going to set at, I don't know, 4 o'clock, 4.30, something like that, right? Like, it's going to be cold. Yeah, we're po- yeah. we'll be, we'll be so, post-daylight saving at that time. Right? Yeah, so it's going to be cold. It's going to be fairly miserable. It's probably going to be mostly empty. Um, it's certainly going to be empty after halftime when all the students take off. Um, so yeah, I, I, I think, I feel like 70 percent's a little optimistic, but. Oh, mine's hell know. optimistic. Maybe, maybe not. Yeah. I don't know. I, 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 right. have, a feeling, I have a feeling these wind totals are pretty high. <laughs> are, are you, are you, re- are you ready for the totals? I'm, I'm ready. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and go like after the first half of the season, and then I'll give you the total cool. for the whole season. Okay. So, like uh, you, Craig, after six games, one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, so after six games, just want to make sure I was doing the right one. Uh, your cumulative win probability is 3.15. So you are forecasting right. them being three and three after the first six games. Yeah, seem reasonable? Right. Yeah, that seems very reasonable. Okay. Uh, I am a little tiny smidgen more optimistic. I'm at 3.25. So again, I'm still in that three and three range uh, in the first half of the season. And then at the end of the season, your probability is 7.25. So you are at your, you're forecasting seven and five. And I am just a little more pessimistic at 7.1. So I am also forecasting seven and five, but at 7.1. That's so, I don't know. Does that seem reasonable? Seven and five. Yeah, like if, 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 if you were just be like, what do you think their record's going to be? I would probably be like seven and five. <laughs> like, okay. If we All right. So do, that do exercise, you want, <laughs> yeah. do you want another data point to uh, affirm your, your probabilities here? Sure. Uh, on the ESPN FPI, the projected record right now is 7.1 and 4.9. <laughs> so, I actually landed on 7.1. You were just a little tiny bit above 7.1. Computer so brain. I don't know. I swear. Yeah. I swear we didn't, we didn't look that up beforehand, but, um, but yeah, so they're projecting us to be around seven wins as well. So it's like at seven wins. Would you feel good about the season? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. I, I'm not sure if I would or not. 
Like, I'm kind of like, on the one end, I feel like we should be able to do better than seven. Like, but also like, I kind of think that I, I would feel really good about eight, seven. I would feel like, eh, which for a one game difference really probably shouldn't influence my feeling. Eight that and four greatly, sounds way but... cooler. Yeah. And honestly, it, probably does. Would, it definitely would be, does. A, would be a step up in a bowl game for sure. Yes, probably a, a pretty significant step yeah. up, but um, yeah. So if they, you know, if they are uh, seven and five, eight and four, like that's yeah. I mean, that's pretty good, I guess. Yeah, I'll it's just it. it's again, it's it's hard to tell, and you know, it kind of like if we're gonna be playing schedules like this, I guess like uh, six and six is like a bare goddamn minimum. Otherwise, yes. you're gonna be like, what what's going on? Um, so you, yes. now that I'm saying that, like maybe, maybe I wouldn't be super excited about seven and five. Um, yeah. but if we got to eight and four, we got to nine wins, which I don't think is out of the realm of possibility. Um, no, I don't, uh, I don't either. The, I, I would feel uh, nine would be great. I could, uh, all the talent they lost eight would be really good. Yes. Nine seven, would feel incredible. I think seven would be like, a, like there'd be a positive just because what, what they all, the they had to go through. Um, yeah, it's, I, I think, uh, yeah, it'll be, it's just interesting. I'm excited for it to actually just happen and we have football again. Yes. I, I think that, you know, like a lot of seasons, it's, it's really kind of coming down to those early games, those early big games. Right. So mm -hmm. like, cause that has so much influence over where you end up at the end when you play Texas tech and UW, you know, if you split those you're probably feeling fine, you know, as long as you split them, if you lose them both, then you're like, uh, right. And so I think, I think that's kind of the big thing. If you win them both now, all of a sudden, like, like you're talking about that, you know, is nine wins, uh, the sort of thing that you feel like is, is within reach. Cause at that point you're probably, you know, presumably three and oh, it with nine games to go, you know, at that point, going favored six in and almost three every does game. Not seem, yeah. Six and three does not seem crazy at yeah. that point. So, um, yeah. So I think that Texas tech, UW, those two games, I think those are really, um, you know, that that's kind of really the crux. You, if you leave that Oh, and two now all of a sudden you're like, you know, six and three in that last, you know, three quarters of the season, that only gets you to seven wins. So, yeah. um, then you're kind of thinking, uh, you know, are we going to be bowl eligible? That seems like the bare minimum. If we don't end up bowl eligible, that I think is a pretty big disaster. Yes, if if we go five and seven schedule. against this schedule, that is a big red flag. And honestly, we'd have yes. to look at Jake Dickert's position. Like yeah. if if well, we and it just five. makes you it just makes you wonder like what the world is like for us yeah. going forward. Yeah, right. So yeah, yeah, I, and I think that you know whatever is happening going forward, you know, I mean, you know, probably a lot of people have seen like the rumors about Big Twelve, whatever. Um, you know, the reality is you still, you really do still need to finish this season showing that you belong, that, that you're a cut above the mountain West. And yep. I think that's kind of what you need here is that that's where I think seven and five, eight and four kind of gets you is, okay, look, we're, we're still a cut above, um, this situation, even if maybe Texas tech UW doesn't go. Yeah. Right. If, if you, um, yeah, if, if, so. if you go, if you go six and two against that mountain West schedule, that's, that's good especially yeah. given all the, the road games and stuff, but like, yep. yeah. Um, yeah. It, yeah. I'm just excited to go to Pullman and watch yeah. the football. Um, and yeah, we'll see our, see our friend Lars. We have a, we have a loge box this year. I know. Look so at you. completing, completing my, 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 uh, uh, premium seating bingo card. Um, yes. In three consecutive <laughs> years. Sweet club, yeah, way to go. yeah, yeah. Good work. Uh, I am excited to sit on my couch and watch the game without stealing your Pac-12 network login. Uh, so that'll be exciting. I'll be able to actually watch it on my TV service, oh, and yeah. I will be I... camped out. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. Go ahead. Okay. I was going to say, I'm going to, I'm going to sit on my couch. I'm going to have my computer open. I will have Slack open. We'll have a game thread uh, for Ooh. subscribers for the premium subscribers on, uh, on Slack. So we can talk about the game. Um, so I'm excited. You know, I've got my stash of old crimson that I'll be, 
I'll be working through during the game. And then also the plan, the plan is to resurrect my Monday after column uh, to send out on the newsletter Monday morning. So yeah, pretty excited about that. Um, trying to get some, trying to get back into writing now that I've spent, you know, however many weeks gallivanting around Europe, like a rich person, even I, though I'm just a teacher. I am, uh, I'm happily kicking Comcast of the curve now. <laughs> um, I'll have direct Woo-hoo! TV, direct TV stream and, uh, quantum internet, whatever I, you know, it's it just it, the change no longer have to, uh, seek out actual network. Um, for you, yeah. you, you and, and my sister and everyone else. Yes. Um, but yeah. <laughs> and also saving some And money. I no longer have to be like, I no longer have to send you a message, be like, after I log in and it sends you the authentication code and send you a message, be like, it's me. It's me. Yeah. I'm the one yeah. trying to log in. Yep. <laughs> no more of that. No All more right. of that. All right. What about, by the way, should we do like a quick, like score prediction on tomorrow? Oh, sure. Um, I'm going to go... Uh, I'll go, uh, 49, 17. Oh, wow. Okay. I'm going to go a little, I think it's going to be a little lower scoring. I don't know what, uh, I don't know what the odds makers say the over under is, but I'm gonna go a little lower scoring. I'm going to go like 38 to 13. Cool. I feel like the, a lot of the FCS ones don't always get published until like the day of it's weird. Yeah, it's true. Uh, or it's like, That's it'll true. be like at one place and you, you have to find your most degenerate friend and he'll know the line. Um, yes. so yeah. Um, yep. so yeah, uh, if you want to, uh, follow us along this season, um, on, uh, Twitter slash X, I'm at the Craig powers. Jeff is at pod versus everyone. Um, please, if you like what we do, um, you can subscribe, uh, to us. You can pay us, uh, $5 a month or what is it, Jeff? $50 a year. All right. I think that's right. Yeah. Um, and you get access to our premium Slack. Uh, we have some premium content that we do on occasion. Um, yep. We'll have the game threads. You can talk with us. We're very active in there. We answer lots of questions or we just goof around. Um, this weekend we'll be tracking how many old Crimsons I have, which is at one currently. <laughs> um, yes. I'm, I'm at two. I'm ahead. Yes. Oh, you're beating me. Well, I have to drive to fall. But you're so getting ready was, to drive. I was so. limiting myself to yeah. one. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. So, uh, yeah. So you could do that at uh, podcast versus everyone.com. You can subscribe. You can also find Jeff. He's doing this Monday after column. You, you, um, you can see that content there, his recruiting content, all that. Um, so, yeah. And if you subscribe to that, the podcast gets sent to your email box. Um, before it goes to Apple Podcasts and all that, um, yeah. so it's a it's a good time. So you can subscribe without paying. You can subscribe with paying. You do pay. You get access to that premium Slack, which is a very good time. I, I enjoy it. Yeah, and I get it for free. Suckers. Um, but yeah. So <laughs> Jeff, I guess with all that, this is uh, our nice under one hour podcast. Never mind. Um, but yeah, uh, all I have to say is go fucking. Go fucking kooks, Craig. Black Lives Matter. Black Lives Matter. Uh, join a union. Or support one. Or did I do it backwards? Was the vaccination one next? That's how I oh, yeah. how to practice. Yeah, Get guys. vaccinated. Join a union or support a union. Do all that. Uh,